started. Okay. So we are studying the gifts of the spirit. <laughs> we are looking, we've looked at um, uh, the gift of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and uh, prophecy. And we're looking at different uses of the gift of prophecy, how it blesses. It brings strength, encouragement, comfort. It motivates. It uh, reveals the pro potential of a person. That potential that the God has placed in the person person also brings confirmation of what God has already been speaking to that person and also inspires prayer. So you God reveals something moving us to pray for that particular need, pray for that person, pray for that need, pray for that nation. Right. Uh, I remember once we were, you know, uh, as a worship team, we were just praying and um, and God showed the shape of a nation. Right, shape. You know, if you see the world map, shape of a country. You know, out of somewhere, out of nowhere. We were not, not even praying for nations that day. But then, that was a revelation, right? And then began to pray for that. So, uh, God inspires prayer um, to bring guidance, to bring correction, um, to reveal, to give fresh insight about scriptures, about the Word of God, to alert believers. Uh, to warn of what is ahead, okay? to reveal secrets of people. And that we see in 1 Corinthians 14, again, we see that, well, here comes someone, total stranger, but the secrets of their heart are revealed. And they realize that hey, no other human being can know this. It, it, there's no way this person can know these things, information about me. Right. I remember, you know, there was once um, in church again a prophetic uh, uh, ministry time, and there was there were some people who were ministering, and and uh, that day uh, the person who was praying and ministering about someone, he, he shared, you know, you had, um, you know, this is what you were planning to sign, sign some papers, you know? and uh, God says, yeah, this. Uh, you know, God, God is behind that, and He's fine. You can go ahead. You've been praying, asking God for confirmation. This. So that person was very surprised, you know, very surprised, more than surprised, shocked, right? That uh, no one else knew, and this person was not from Bangalore, from somewhere else, and there's absolutely no way this person would go or know about these this detail. But God knows, God reveals, right? So there was much peace, and um, and there was much confirmation, right? And uh, and then there was a, I would say, a turning of heart. Towards God, uh, uh, even more uh, a recommitment uh, towards God, and saying, "God, you know, I'm surrendering. I'm opening up my life. All those defenses which were there came down." Right? Okay. So, to in prayer, to intercede, to wage a good warfare, uh, to appoint people into ministry. Now that also happens because uh, he, um, you know, uh, Paul writes to Timothy. Uh, in 1 Timothy 4 and verse 14, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. So what happens is that uh, Timothy was actually appointed for ministry in Ephesus right, as a pastor to take care of that church, that fellowship there. So, he was, so, so Paul is writing and he's uh, recalling that event right, when people... When the elders prayed over him, so he's saying, "This is what happened. You now, don't neglect the gift that is in you, which was imparted to you by prophecy." Right? So, which means that um, uh, that, and he says, "Okay, that uh, by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership." So, so there is this appointment, this commissioning that happened at that time, but also the impartation of the spiritual gifts that happened at that time. You know, maybe. We don't know what the gifts were, but then uh, you know, Paul is saying, don't neglect those gifts, which was given to you by laying on of hands, uh, by prophecy. Okay, um, And also to declare the purposes of God. So the question is this, okay, this is wonderful, So, but how is prophecy received? Okay, so how can I receive this prophetic word from God? Right. So we learned about how we are spirit, soul, and body. So we learned about how we have physical senses, right? Hearing, um, hearing, um, seeing, yeah, taste, everything, touch, feel. Right? Same way, we also have spiritual senses. There is a parallel. Okay. 
So we receive information from the Holy Spirit through our spiritual senses. It could be something visual. It could be something you know something in our spirit. It could be uh, like a like a moving picture. It could be a word, right? Um, something audible that you hear in your spirit. You know, it's not your know, natural ear, but then you hear in your spirit a prompting. So all this is possible. Okay. Let's look at a few uh, scriptures. Okay, um, Hosea chapter twelve and verse ten. Okay, Hosea twelve and verse ten says, the Lord is saying, God is saying, I have also spoken by the prophets and have multiplied visions. I have given symbols through the witness of the prophets. Okay, so what is he saying? I have spoken by the prophets. Okay. And then I have multiplied what? Visions, something visual. I have given symbols. So again, symbols, something that is visual, an image that is symbolic. Okay. So what does that mean? What does something that is symbolic mean? I've given symbols. So God shows you a tree, right? That doesn't mean that God wants you to go plant a tree. Or God, that doesn't mean that God wants you to, let's say, you know, there's a tree and there's a maybe, you know, there's a watering that is happening, and you see yourself, you know, in that in that picture, watering the tree or you know, doing something and then looking at admiring the tree. So does that mean that God wants you to plant the tree in, in your garden? Okay. So the tree is signifying something else. Right? It is uh, symbolic of something. Maybe, uh, uh, maybe a, a work that he's assigned to you, and he's saying, "Okay, you nurture it, so and you you make sure that it grows, and it'll be a blessing." Right? So maybe maybe it's something like that. So uh, that what you see is a symbol of something else. Right? Uh, maybe you're going in a you see something. You're going in a car, and you're you're sitting there. And then you see that uh, in the driver's seat, there's no one else. Right? There's nobody there, but the car is moving at a, you know, and you're feeling very panicky. And then, and then you you move to the driver's seat and you sit, and you hold, the, you know, you hold the steering, you sit. That's the end of the dream. So what does it mean? Does it mean that tomorrow when you're going, you know, that uh, there won't be a driver, or driver falls out, and you need to step in? Does that mean it could be literal, but Many times it's symbolic, right? Symbolic of maybe a group of people traveling with you, maybe a family you're on a journey going together, and there is nobody who is leading that family, right? Uh, to be your own family, and maybe you feel that, okay, I'm sitting there, but I'm not giving leadership spiritually, you know, in other aspects. I'm not really leading, taking the lead. So maybe this dream could be a, you know, to be. To the head of the family, saying you need to go sit and take charge, hold the steering wheel, take charge, steer, right? direct the movement of that group of people traveling together. Whatever it could be, ministry it could be. So these are symbolic. Okay. So yeah. So God speaks. He gives visions. He says, "I have given symbols through the witness of the Holy Spirit." Now we might understand. We might ask, you know, God, why do you speak like this? Holy Spirit, why? You know, why can't he just come and tap my shoulder and say, okay, go do this? This is how God has done. Right? This is how God chooses to. He wants to engage with us. He wants to you know, have that relationship with us so, we, so that we ask him and we ask for interpretation and so on. But, but this is how he engages with us. Right? He chooses to speak this way. And many other scriptures, you know, if you look at Numbers 12, verses 5 to 8, you can probably note that down. Numbers 24, verse 15, 16. Right? You see that God over and over again chooses to do this, speaks, right? chooses to quicken his word right? from the Logos. He gives us the Rhema, right? quickens the word to us, to our hearts. So 
Um, so we all that we see all this happening. It could be a still small voice. It could be a still small impression, a knowing, a picture, uh, scripture, scripture portion. Sometimes even scripture references. Right? You get up in the morning. I need to read this verse. Right? You you have a sense. I need to read this verse. I don't know from where this this reference is coming on. You know? I need to. Oh, it could be. I need to sing this song. Uh, you know, there's a there's one line of the song that keeps coming. I need to look into that song. I need to so God can speak in these ways. Okay, so what do we do? We first pray, ask the Lord, God, you know, what is it that you want to speak to me? What is it that you want to speak through me? Uh, and have be in a state of faith and expectation. Okay. If you're going to be you know sitting there saying, okay, God, if you want to speak, you speak, otherwise don't. <laughs> or if you're saying that, okay, if he speaks, let's see. Right? No, this Bible is very clear. You know, you desire spiritual gifts, right? Uh, pursue love, desire spiritual gifts, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 1. So be in that uh, state of desiring, expecting. Right? Because God is a God who speaks, right? He's a living God. He's a God who speaks here and now. So do that. And then, second, so there are three letters, you know, um, three words, pray, perceive, and prophesy. Okay, three Ps, pray, perceive, prophesy. So what does perceive mean? Perceive means come to a state of awareness, be aware, okay, come to a, come to um, uh, receiving something. Um, uh, it could be, um, uh, you know, our senses receiving something like it to become aware or conscious, uh, to be able to recognize, uh, and so on, to understand, to perceive it. What is this information? Then the third one is to to actually do something about it, right? To prophesy. Okay. Now, uh, like I said, there's going to be a, a very in-depth study the whole semester about the prophetic. So, you know, you will get into a lot of lot more details, how it was in the Old Testament, how is it in the New Testament, prophetic dreams, prophetic prayer, all those things, right? So, very interesting. So, uh, but then today we'll just see, okay, how can I, when I'm receiving, how can I validate or evaluate uh, what I'm receiving? Okay, what are those things we said? How can I check, you know, whether it's just my own emotions or it's from God? Okay, so what did we learn? What are the some checks that we can do, even as we are receiving? How can I test? How will you test? First one, whether it's in agreement, alignment with the Word of God. Why? Why should we do that? That's the, that's the foundation. If you want scripture, 1 John chapter 5, uh, I'm not sure about the verse, but talks about how the Father, the Word, and the Spirit are one. Okay. And in John chapter 14, 15, when, when uh, the Lord Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit, he said that he will testify of me, will take a word as me and reveal. So he's not going to, and Jesus is the eternal word, he's not going to say something that Jesus agrees with, or Jesus puts his, uh, you know, he's not going to say something which is against what Jesus agrees with or Jesus approves of, right? He's not going to say, "I know Jesus said this, but then you do this." He's not going to say that, right? So he's it's going to be in agreement, and that's why this is the safest place, right? You know the Word of God, be filled with the Word of God, be renewed with the Word of God, then we will know what we are hearing is actually from the word, from God's Word or not. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second one. Does it bring? Okay, so does it edify, exhort, comfort? Um, now, in that, we need to be a little, little more careful because it could be a warning, right? It'd be an alert. Uh, but then, even with that warning or alert, um, you know, uh, uh, alerting the person, it can come. It can bring edification. It can bring exhortation. Why? Because we know 
God's heart is a redemptive heart. His nature is to restore, right, uh, and not to destroy, right. So, so that's that's something. So, uh, so these are some broadly, you know, some checks that we can employ. The other thing is also to validate, you know, whether it's me or is it my own emotion or is it from the spirit? Again, the 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 plumb line is the word of God. So Hebrews four verse twelve talks about how the word of God, you know, is sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of bone and marrow, even to the you know the thoughts and the intents of the heart, the soul and the spirit. Okay, what is of the soulish realm? What is of the spirit? The word of God will actually testify. Word, word of God will distinguish. Okay, okay. Out of our emotions, yeah, it's possible. You know, like uh, for example, I'll just share this example. What happened was um, this person who was actually ministering, praying for this couple. Uh, they were actually um, they did not have a baby for a long time. Okay, so uh, they were praying, and this person prayed, prophesied. God revealed something, saying that they will have a baby by whatever you know time. So. He he prophesied. He is, he was very excited because he has been you know, praying for that couple. But when it when it came to actually delivering the prophecy, he said, "God is giving you a boy baby." Okay, so uh, why? Because he was I don't know. He was excited. He just said, "God is giving you a boy baby." I know you've been praying. God is giving you. So lo and behold, baby was born. Baby was girl. <laughs> so then uh, they wrote. Back to the person saying, you know, thank you. You know, you prayed, you prophesied. We are blessed. We are happy. You know, praise God. Uh, just, but just wanted you to know that it's not a boy baby, but a girl baby. So this person wrote back saying, you know, I thank you. Uh, I apologize for the mistake I made. And he said, you know, I was very excited. And looking back now, I see that I was very excited, very happy for you. And in my excitement, which is emotions, right, of the soul's realm, I said, boy baby. So there was a mix, you know. The information was correct, but because the, this person was excited and this thing, but no harm done, uh, because that is why we have in one Thessalonians five where we are called to test, hold on to what is good. Now, just because of this, don't despise prophecies. Don't call that person a false prophet and you know stone him. <laughs> Right. Um, test. So even as we receive, we are validating. Oh God, you know, is it from you? But don't be validating it, evaluating it from a place of fear. What if I get it wrong? What if I, you know, that's I don't know. I don't. I want to be absolutely right, absolutely clear, absolutely accurate. Uh, I don't. I don't want to say anything. You know, that is not of you. And you're just waiting, 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 evaluating, analyzing. Over. The time is over, gone, and then you're still wondering: Should I say? Should I not say? Person is gone. Bus is gone. <laughs> you know. So as we, as we, you know, as we learn, as we learn about this, as we practice this, yeah, go ahead, step out, but do this. You evaluate, and also give permission for that person to check and tell you you are right, you are wrong. No, that's humility. Right? You're saying, I heard from God. And this is what God says. And then the other person says, Brother, I think you are wrong. <laughs> have that humility, right? Have that humility to say, you know, I place this before you. This is what I feel, I sense, right? And I'm sure, you know, as we grow in the prophetic, that, um, you know, there'll come a place where you can say, Thus says the Lord. You know? But we are again called to test. And submit for testing. Like we see that in 1 Corinthians 14, also, where Paul writes in that you all can prophesy, all can learn, all can prophesy. But he says that you know, let one person prophesy, let the others judge the prophecy, discern it. Okay? So it's um it's 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 a very biblical thing to submit it and uh, and test it, validate it. Okay, so. So um, does it align with the written scripture? Um, and, and, the, and you know, the wonderful thing is we have the Holy Spirit who's living in us, right? 
So he gives us a sense whether it's right or wrong. He gives us a sense. Okay. Even as uh, because he, I'm sure you've experienced. You know, so you go, you maybe you're doing something wrong, even intentionally or something you've said. Immediately you know something is not right. Either it's your own senses, or the Holy Spirit is revealing. He's he's just holding up the red flag, saying, "Stop it! <laughs> you know that's dangerous territory. Enough." Okay, so you have the presence of the Holy Spirit. You sense the presence of the, as you grow, as we you know grow in the relationship. You sense the presence of the Holy Spirit, and you say, "God, yeah, I need to continue in this some more." Or you sense that okay, it's time. Uh, I don't think I should. Right? So you sense the anointing, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Um, then the other thing is this, you know, do you have any bias in your heart, in your mind? What does that mean? A prejudice, okay? A bias. Uh, you could have bias about certain kinds of people. You could have a bias, like people say, you know, oh, these rich people, you know, they're all like this. They're all wicked. Like we see, you know, Maybe we see somebody driving off in a good car or you know having a good house, and we say, "I don't know how he got it, yeah, I don't know how many you know how many things he cheated, uh, must have got it we sometimes we have that bias, we don't immediately think, oh, he must have worked hard, this person must have worked hard, this person must have you know have God's favor, and then we don't think that way sometimes, or let's say a politician, okay, to look at a politician, somebody in government or. Immediately, what comes to your mind? This person is integrity wise. What they say, what they do, we have that bias, prejudice, right? So, do you have any kind of bias about people, about a language, about a situation? Now, that also is something that could actually interfere with the prophetic word. So, that's also something that you check. Validate on the inside. Evaluate. Hey, do I have any bias? No. You know. Do I have any bias against poor people? Do I have any bias about you know uh, rich people? Do I have any bias about you know people speaking this language? They are coming from this state. Do I have? Do I have any kind of bias? Get clear. Say, okay, God, this is a child of your child, right? and uh, I'm going to just be a vessel to love, to prophesy, to honor, to respect. Right. Let your word bring whatever it's your word. I'm going to be. I'm going to commit to speaking it faithfully. I'm a delivery boy. Let me deliver it. Right. If I on the deli on the way to the house to deliver, if the delivery boy takes one, you know, one slice of the pizza that you ordered, <laughs> that's not what you know what was sent by the restaurant, right? Uh, and that's that's only you know that's not the full thing, and it doesn't glorify the. You know the, the, that actually that people are going to complain about the restaurant, complain about the person, all that. So faithfully deliver. Don't have bias. Don't have prejudice. Okay. So if you're doing it in a group again, let everybody participate. Let everybody speak, share. Um, now the thing is, you know, many times we think I, I'm not getting anything. No visual. No word, nothing in my heart. I'm not getting anything, right? It's all blank. Right? No problem. Especially when it comes to ministering to another person, just pray. And you'll be very surprised when you start praying, you're actually praying a prophetic prayer. Like because you ask God, you said, God, I I believe, you know, I want to minister, I want to this person, uh, I want to hear from you, I want to share. Nothing has happened. Everything is blank. But when you start praying, you're praying for the needs of the person that person didn't even reveal. You're praying a very prophetic prayer over that person, right? So don't write yourself off saying oh, I didn't see anything. I didn't think God is not using me. No problem. Right? Just go ahead and uh, step out in faith. Be assured, right? Um, and and step out and do it. Okay. Some um, don'ts. Okay, this is all these do's. Don'ts is don't try to be a fortune teller. Right? Okay. Maybe people say, "What is God saying? What is God doing?" That just encourage the person to hear from God themselves. Right? 
we should not become dependent on you right just because god is using you in the prophetic you should not come and say okay about this matter what is god saying so encourage the person to depend on god on the holy spirit on the written word right and of course pray and if god reveals something if god confirms anything definitely you know we we need to share right so don't become a fortune teller also don't use the prophetic to manipulate that that means to try and control the person right okay this is what god is saying you need to do this uh, you need to honor the man of god have biryani ready when i come home <laughs> don't do that right uh, I, there's an extreme example but then we could subtly manipulate people emotions just because they are innocent and you know trusting so don't do not manipulate uh, because god says that that is witchcraft okay um where do we see that um that actually when you try to manipulate people it is it is akin to witchcraft right so not do not do that okay so this is all that we have about the uh, the prophetic gift okay it's very interesting um, um of course it results in a lot of change in people in ourselves and we need to really fully pursue that you know every gift of course all the gifts that are listed there precious because there are these are expressions of the holy spirit okay so let's look at the next one which is word of wisdom okay word of wisdom next um, talking about word of wisdom so word of wisdom what is wisdom what is wisdom sorry what putting your knowledge into practice so what is knowledge sorry information learning right um, news whatever that you pick up skills maybe and this wisdom is when to use how to use all this information that you so that is what we normally call as wisdom right so wisdom results in change wisdom results in solving something right wisdom um results in maybe uh some wise counsel right guidance so all that so here we see this gift which is listed there 1 corinthians 12 it talks it says word of wisdom so what is a word we have alphabets we have letters we have words we have sentences paragraphs you know whole books what is a word no yeah of course that is also the word when we say it's a word of god the eternal word the living word but when we normal english when we say word it means is a group of alphabets put together which makes sense right it's a small part of a bigger part it's part of a sentence that's a word right so a word of wisdom so it's not wisdom to change the world you know completely this is the whole solution this is what it is it's not that it's a word it's a part right and it is supernaturally imparted it's not experience that you get from your life experience you know if you're a if you're a cook in the sense you know you're very good at you know in the kitchen you have that experience you have that wisdom already you know now if uh, there will be difference between how you make sambar and how i i will make sambar right i will go by the book two teaspoons just measure out exactly but you might go and say oh, that is it you know this is what i'll put up there why because you it's that experience practice right so that's wisdom that is also important what we acquire you know maybe people have taught that is also wisdom but this wisdom that we are talking about is not something that we have acquired like that but it's supernaturally imparted supernaturally given in that moment why because it's a gift of the spirit gift of the holy spirit so he the holy spirit brings into our heart that supernatural wisdom like you didn't you didn't really train for it but here's that wisdom okay so um it is it could be to solve a problem it could be um uh, something that you want to decide you know what what to do do i go left do i go straight do i take right do i buy this do i you know sell this whatever wisdom it could be about what is coming up in future right it could also word of wisdom also to release some creative ability in us okay now um 
word of wisdom again it uh, it's very useful uh, for the body of christ for the believer and we see some examples right old testament examples would be joseph okay joseph is there in egypt and uh, he interprets the pharaoh's dream right that dream about the famine okay about the seven uh, i mean seven uh, the cattle coming out of the river and also the seven stack of corn okay he interprets the dream and what does he do the interpretation he says interpretation comes from god right so he interprets the dream this is what it is this is what it represents it means seven years of famine seven years of sorry seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine what else does he do after that sorry yeah so he gives a strategy he doesn't stop by saying okay this is this is what you'll have plenty then problem so he gives a strategy now we see that that also he has received from god because he is not a strategy he's he's been working in you know he's been imprisoned and all that but god gives him that wisdom this is what you need to do okay. so it could be uh, something like that that god gives him that moment so we see that example and there are other examples like bezalel uh, who uh, receives uh, god says that i've anointed him for this what creative things to make wood work and precious stones and design those things even king david you know he's shepherd boy he's uh, he becomes a king he's uh, now leading a kingdom and god gives him god puts in his heart a design for the temple that's finally solomon builds like he receives that in his heart again a uh, wisdom word of wisdom right um so we see all that happening in the new testament um you know the we see um well the wise men okay wise men being warned by in a dream not to go to herod not to go back right because he is seeking to kill the baby not to go back so they receive an instruction right it is a it is a, it's a step that they need to take or they need to avoid right uh, that is one and then also um, paul uh, paul's directions to go to macedonia he receives in the form of a dream um he paul also declares okay this is what will happen if you actually um you know they are in the storm it's a life threatening storm and um, and he gives this word of wisdom he says this is what god says that um there will not be loss of life the ship will be damaged but there will not be loss of life so here's this thing this is what is going to happen something that is in the future so we see that word of wisdom has a uh, something for the present and something for the or something for the future usually it's that right it could be something for the present to solve something in the present or it could be something in the future right to take care of something in the future okay. so we see that okay so how is a word of wisdom received okay it is it is the same way you be sensitive and train your spiritual senses we we understand right when we say spiritual senses the term spiritual senses like to be sensitive in this but how are you receiving how are you hearing are we seeing anything are we feeling anything in our heart or even you know are there any physical sensations also right so there's a quickening of scripture very important you know very foundational there could be a knowing on the inside of us um it could be something visual that we are seeing it could be a dream it could be you know you're having a conversation and you begin to speak something share something that you did not plan on speaking or sharing right so that could also be nothing planned premeditated but it was by inspiration by the holy spirit uh something that takes care of a uh, it's a go godly counsel that takes care of a problem that takes care of something solving something which is you know some challenge that we are facing okay so we'll stop here and then we'll come back after the break